Good morning, guys. Well, you know, the internet is full of example videos showing how to replace various parts, but interestingly enough, they tend to gloss over the most important part, and that is the diagnosis. After all, as an amateur, you want to be sure that the part that you're replacing is bad before you go out and spend dollars to replace it. So uh, today I'm going to replace the left rear door lock actuator in a 2000 Suburban. I'm going to walk you through how I made the diagnosis and then we'll swap out the parts. Stay tuned. Well, when you've been in the same part a few times, you start to recognize common problems. And the common problem here is this um, up-down switch on the connector. To try and free up my um, arms, especially with my bad wing here, I'm going to put a bungee cord to the top of the door. I've got the window down at the moment. And that way I can hang the inner door panel and, and get a clearer view of uh, how to disconnect that connector. Now, I did another video showing the details of how to get this undone, but basically you lift the panel up. There's no prying out. You have to do a couple of 7mm nuts, undo this light, and then you're left with this connector. Now, the tricky thing about this connector is it tends to uncome, uh, undo itself at the switch rather than the connector. And there are a couple of black plastic parts that will fall out and drop onto the ground. So you've got to be careful not to lose one. Here's one of them right here. And um, just be careful with that. But um, it comes apart and we're ready to go. So now let's peel off the plastic and get at the regulator. Now this here is the rod that connects the door handle to the actuator and so I need to apply this little retaining clip off this little plastic thing so see if I can get this thing off. There and then once that clip is off this piece of metal comes out. Some guys like to just undo this bolt here so they can move it away but I seem to be able to do it without having to do that. So the next step is to undo these three T30 Torx screws. Now let's raise the window back up to give ourselves more room. You can see I've undone the connectors there already because I've uh, done much of this repair already. And I'm just repeating some steps now that I have the new parts. Now we've got to undo one more connector and it's right there. And it's the same design, it's one of those plastic slip tabs so you just slide it out. Um, and get it free and then it'll come undone from that little hook connector on the door handle. The, it's the outer door handle right there. Okay, now it should just lift out. Um, just take these. So... Now, if you don't have these disconnected, now's the time that it's pry out. This um, one with the blue cover is the actuator power switch with 12 volts on either side of that when it's uh, turned on. And then this is the door jam switch to tell the car whether the car has uh, got the door shut or not. Okay, now I've front probed the power connector. If you want to be a purist, you could back probe it, but I'm confident the wires are small enough it won't be an issue. Now I'm going to set it up on min max so I can get a clear picture of what my maximum readings are. And then uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, hit the lock and unlock button and see what my maximum voltages are. Okay, so what are our min max features? 11.1 on the positive side and minus 11.2 on the negative. So those are pretty good. Now, does that mean there's no problem on the wires? Well, um, no, it doesn't, interestingly enough, and that's because we didn't get electrons flowing with this test. To do this test properly, we need to see if there's dynamic resistance within the wires. And to get that, we need to prove that there um, is no um, resistant point at the switch or elsewhere. And so I'm going to um, first start with a test light, and we'll see if a it can light up a test light. So with that, we know that we've got enough um, power there to drive a test light. Now, I know this test light um, takes about 100 milliamps, and that's quite a bit less than the power regulator would take when it's in full operation. And so to properly test this, we'd need to go a little bit further. Let's go on to do a formal voltage drop test in this vehicle. I'm going to use the Load Pro here, and uh, this is a pretty simple device. There's actually just a couple of test leads that are hooked into the um, multimeter. And whenever you test a load pro, you always make sure that the fuse isn't blown. And the way to do that is to put it onto ohms and then press the button and you should get about 25 ohms. So there we are, 25.9 ohms. So that's the resistance in the circuit. Now, when you think about that, we didn't touch these two things together. So how are we getting 25 ohms? Well, the answer is there's a second wire that goes up to this lead and goes down through a resistor and then over to the ground lead. And that's how you short circuit the ground. So what that basically does is it creates a load situation. 
Now we're going to hook it up these two leads and we're going to see what kind of um, voltage drop we get once we get current flowing. It's really important to understand this, so I'll show you this another way. Once you understand the principle, you'll see its application everywhere. Not just for looking at corrosion in a circuit, but also understand battery testing and how voltage drops across the length of a wire. Your battery's at the upper left with a power wire and a ground leading to a device. I've disconnected the device at its connector to test the circuit, and I put a voltmeter in its place on the right. What you want to know is the unknown circuit resistance here. Now you might think that all you need to do is to measure voltage at the connector, but even if resistance is really high, when you measure it without current flowing, the voltage will be the same as at the battery. The trick you use is to add in a known resistor here, and then you measure voltage difference across these two points with current flowing. We used a bypass resistance of about 25.9 ohms, and when current was flowing we measure voltage. From there, if you want, you could use Ohm's Law to calculate the current flowing, and then once you know current flowing, you can easily calculate the unknown circuit resistance anywhere on its course. But most of the time, for automotive repair applications, the diagnosis is so obvious, you don't need to overthink it. As a crude rule of thumb, if your circuit voltage drops by less than a volt when you start current flowing, your circuit is fine. Okay, I've got the Load Pro all hooked up. Now we'll unlock the doors, and then press the Load Pro and it drops very minimally. Let's go to the unlock, press load pro, and so there's a very minimal voltage drop there and so we know the current is fine and so we know that there's no problem with the wires leading up to the actuator. We know the problem has to be in the actuator. Now we use some fancy tools for this test but I want to emphasize that you don't need it. Most of the time you can get by with just an old style incandescent test light. If you do use a test light, you want to make sure it draws enough current, and I did a video a few years ago showing how to evaluate your test light to see uh, how well it works. Now, and speaking of um, little projects, it'd be a great little project to make your own load tester, and you could do that with about $5 worth of parts. If you watch Respectic Mechanics here on YouTube, they use incandescent lights, and the appealing thing about that is you get a visual signal as to how much current is flowing. They use high current uh, lights so that they can test higher current applications. Of course, you won't get quantitative data on that because the resistance of an incandescent light varies depending on current, but that's not important anyway. So now let's test passive resistance in this circuit. So um, there isn't any power going to it, and we're, we've set our multimeter at ohms, and we're just going to see what the resistance is across the two active leads. And interestingly enough, it tends to dance around a little bit. Um, initially, when I did this test the first time, before I got this next part, my resistance was only about 4 or 5 ohms. But you can see it changes. It seems to be dancing around a little bit, closer to 100 ohms now. Um, perhaps it's in relation to the fact that it's been able to dry out, or perhaps it's um, wiring that's very tenuous because it's been overheated with all the extra stress it's been under. Okay, as a final check, we're going to apply power to this and see if we can get some kind of power moving. And I'm going to use a power probe but um, you could use um, a fused wire, anything. It'd be good to have some sort of resistance in the way so that if it does show too much current, you're not going to melt any wires or cause any extra damage. So it's um, a ground connection all the way through back to that uh, spare battery that I've got there. And I'll apply power to the power probe. And the power drops from 13.4 to 12.4. And you notice nothing happens. So this is the whole door latch mechanism here, and you can buy the whole part of it, a whole part aside from these three wires, uh, for about $100 to $150. But I don't think we need that. The mechanism itself seems to be working fine. And if you look at it, all the moving parts seem to be doing fine. It's been well lubricated and yet still doesn't work. So I think the problem is the solenoid, this little electric motor in here that moves it back and forth. Now, um, I don't think I need to take off these wires anymore because I'm just going to swap over the electrical element. And to do that, we're going to undo these torque screws. There are three of them. And I'm going to try, I'm not sure if all three of them needs to be undone. Let's give that a go. These are T10 torque screws. have it right there. That's the part we need. 
And here's the part number. I know somebody's going to ask 6556017. That's a Napa part number. Now, um, you guys in the U.S. have access to eBay and a variety of other uh, services that offer excellent um, pricing and free shipping, but we in Canada don't get that free shipping, and so everything we pay for ends up costing significantly more. So they look to be very similar, aside from color. The connectors look identical. You can see there's a roller here that moves in the old one. And the roller moves in this one as well. All right, now let's see if this uh, new device works. I'm going to apply 12 volts with the power probe here. And um, if you wanted to do this without the power probe, you could use a fused switch of some type. But uh, basically, we're going to apply 12 volts. So it seems to work. And if you got this far, then you'll know that <clears throat> installation is pretty easy. I'm putting a little dielectric grease on the connectors just to try and exclude water from the electrical connection. Anybody who does a procedure a hundred times will have little tricks they use to speed up their workflow. You can take this device off and then when you put it back on, you can more easily line it up with the probe. It's, this end is hooked in with little hooks and you just uh, pry those hooks out and, and then it comes out easily. Just make sure the red mark is on the, on the back side. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope it helps with your repair. Well, now we get to move on to the fun stage. I've proved the new part is good, and so now we get to play with this and see what's inside. So I'm going to start with this white thing and just pry this, pry this part off. So here's what it looks like with this <clears throat> white piece removed. I don't see anything too abnormal here. And then you can pry that plastic piece off, and it seems okay here. Now the next part I'm seeing a few glue lines, one there and then one all the way around here. Um, but I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, so I'm going to um, bring my BFH to, to play and we'll just see what happens. Make sure you have your safety glasses on. Whoa! Check that out. Look at all this rust. Holy crap. Well, with a little difficulty, I've searched around the garage and have found most of the little parts that came apart when I uh, used my BFH. And um, of course, what you really notice is the huge amount of rust here. And the question that's going through my mind is, how did the rust get there? Did it come in from behind through the mechanism, maybe through the uh, door latch itself, or did it drip down from the window on the wire and then through the connector? When um, I took the connector initially off, it was full of water in there, and so I'm not surprised it's all rusty. Say, so, uh, if this video helped you out and you want to see more of them, then hit like or subscribe or leave a comment. I'd love to hear what others say. Thanks for watching.